I still remember back in 2007 when I first played through Bioshock and I fell in love with the game then just like a lot of other people. It's an incredibly unique first person shooter and one that hasn't really been replicated, not even by its uh, two sequels. And um, although I haven't played Bioshock Infinite, I am getting there and I took it upon myself recently to replay through Bioshock, more specifically the remastered version. Although on my Steam library I have both Bioshock and Bioshock Remastered and Bioshock 2 and Bioshock 2 Remastered. You get the gist, which is very annoying. I just want to play the remastered version. I don't know why when you get the game you have to get all of the add-on bullcrap, but you do. Now, if you have not played Bioshock before, then you should be in for a treat if you go in completely blind. I'm not going to give any specific spoilers away in this video, but all I will say is that Bioshock takes place in the fictitious underwater city known as Rapture in like the 1940s-ish era. Uh, so you get to utilize Tommy guns and revolvers and a shotgun and a grenade launcher and a crossbow and uh, and also what's really unique is that you get to be able to inject yourself because your character finds a syringe on the floor and thinks that the best thing to do in that situation is to just inject it straight into his arm. Um, <laughs> clearly this guy's from London. But you, uh, with it, you gain special abilities. Uh, the first one being being able to fire off an electrical blast. And you can also fire off uh, fire, setting people and oil on fire. Also, using the electric, if their people are stood in water, you can electrify the water, which is pretty cool. Not a lot of games utilize that kind of mechanic back in 2007. So that was pretty cool. You can also unleash swarms of bees from your hands. You can freeze people. And you cannot tell me that every time you use the any kind of freezing weapon or ability in a game you don't think of this the iceman cometh of course you do we all did don't worry about it cool party <laughs> it's it's it, it's only you're only human it's only natural now within bioshock you are tasked with helping somebody escape along with their family and just have to go around from level to level doing specific tasks. Now the world of Rapture is very grim. It's obviously had a lot of grief with the splicers, the people that became addicted to the drugs, and they are after Adam, which is the 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 drug in question that they all want. And it is predominantly harvested by little girls. Good to know. That are uh, escorted, uh, chaperoned by something called a Big Daddy. And no, you have not stumbled onto the dark side of Twitter. Uh, it, the Big Daddies are massive men in like diver suits effectively with a drill, some have a gun, and uh, they can do some damage and they're treated as sort of like little mini bosses. They are completely optional and it, once you take a Big Daddy down you then get the option to either kill or save the little sisters. So, I'll let your conscience decide on what to do there. Of course, if you kill them, you get more Adam, uh, being able to unlock more plasmid slots to equip more abilities, or you uh, you can also use it to level up your health and, you know, your Evo, which is what you use to replenish for your magical ability, your MP, basically, um, and various other buffs and debuffs. Uh, or if you save them, you don't get quite as much, but you do get some gifts from this lady who... It is kind of like the mother of all these little sisters, and I will say that harvesting or killing uh, and, and saving these little sisters will impact the end of the game. Just bear that one in mind, so your choice will have a consequence there. Uh, the, graphically, uh, the game the, for the remastered version still holds up pretty well, and the music is also really cool. There's also a lot of things to interact with within the environment, and different there's like little tapes that you can collect throughout the levels that give you some lore and backstory on what the hell is going on in Rapture. Now, of course, combat is pretty solid. You can't aim down sights or anything, but it's not that kind of game. You can utilize hacking, so you can hack into safes. You can hack into uh, gun turrets and cameras, uh, flying little turrets that will follow you around as well. Uh, you can backtrack and go to different p levels and different parts. There is only X amount of little sisters within each level. 
Uh, so, and it will it will warn you before you're about to leave a level that there is still things to be done. If you wish to leave them, that's entirely up to you. The game is roughly around seven to eight hours long, uh, maybe ten on your first playthrough. It's not super long, but it is a very very good game that still looks and plays incredibly well, and one that I absolutely had a blast replaying through, utilizing all the different abilities. Um, again is just as awesome as it was the first time I played the game and I will in a couple of well once after Starfield has come out and I've got my first Starfield uh, I'll then do Bioshock 2 and which I did again did play and I did play a lot of the multiplayer on that as well back in the day Bioshock Infinite I have not played uh, but uh, I, I, I own it so I will 100% uh, give it a go and yeah uh, absolutely 100% worth checking out, especially now and any other day of the month. Bioshock is and uh, always has been a fantastic and atmospheric first-person shooter that uh, really set the bar high for story-driven first-person games. But please let me know in the comments down below if you've played any of the Bioshock games or if you're completely new and you're thinking of checking it out. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Maybe there's a pair of them that remembers how they used to be, how they used to look, and they're ashamed.